So just in terms of an overview, the, the hospital section launched the development of the Basel Statements initially as the creation of what was called the Global Conference on the Future of Hospital Pharmacy. In 2006, we had a meeting of the professional associations of around the world, hospital pharmacy associations, uh, including several, several of you in the room today, and uh, a, a, a decision was made that we should host a, a session, we should host a conference uh, to explore uh, in a systematic way our desired future for hospital pharmacy worldwide. Uh, at that meeting, we launched uh, the effort to start to develop that global conference with the intent of creating consensus statements that have since become the Basel Statements. We received a significant amount of input from EAHP, from the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, the Canadian Society of Hospital Pharmacy, and others in creating the goals and objectives. One of the things that we started our work with was the development and the, the, the implementation of a global survey of hospital pharmacy practice. This was a, an effort of the BPP, of the Board of Pharmaceutical Practice for FIP, as a special project. We received uh, some uh, financial support to conduct this survey. It was an exhaustive survey, and I think probably the most exhaustive survey uh, to date of, of the global picture of hospital pharmacy practice. It provided, uh, the results of the survey provided us with a great base for the creation of the Basel Statements. We relied on the results of the survey as we developed the statements in Basel uh, at the Global Conference. Uh, we also have been subsequently using the results of that survey to guide hospital section programming uh, over the, the last several years. The information that we received from 85 of the 90, 192 UN recognized countries uh, was a 44% response rate, which we were very pleased with. Uh, represented actually a larger portion of the world's population. 83% of the world's population are in those 85 countries. So we, we believe that the survey results provide a very good uh, breadth of information. However, we did not have significant depth. And I think one of the things that we've been working on in the section over the last several years, and I would encourage, uh, as, as you have in Europe, in terms of your survey work, uh, to increase the depth of survey analysis and understand uh, our current our current work. So we had a good representation of the global survey, and the survey has served as the basis of a lot of our work uh, in the past several years. When we launched the, the global conference, we had uh, three principal objectives. One was to build that shared vision among hospital pharmacy opinion leaders around the world about the preferred future of hospital pharmacy. We debated significantly whether we wanted to put aspirational goals goals that would be very difficult, we felt, we felt, in many parts of the developing world to reach, or whether we should put together fundamental, basic uh, premises or basic uh, standards. And we decided to, to go somewhere in the middle, and we put together some statements, as you, you'll see throughout the Basel Statements, some statements that are truly aspirational, where in the developing world we recognize it will be very difficult to achieve the standards represented. And other standards are very basic, to say some of which might be I don't know how we could do hospital pharmacy safely if we didn't do this, or we didn't implement this Basel Statement. So that's the shared vision, though, that we represent in the Basel Statements. We also had an objective of identifying strategic uh, and global goals for uh, global advancement of hospital pharmacy uh, so that each country could achieve uh, a, a greater level of, of development of hospital practice and to create those statements, some reflection in writing of what we believe to be uh, the, the representation of the future vision of hospital pharmacy. Uh, we had significant sponsorship, uh, and this effort of creating the Basel Statements, of running the global conference, was not in it, was, not, was, was very expensive. And we had a, a very nice grant, a large grant from Cardinal Health and another from Amgen, along with financial support from many organizations, EAHP, <coughs> ASHP, the Canadian Society included. So there was, there was a great deal of, of work and effort and money that was required to produce the statements and we believe that, uh, that without that support we could never have, have done the work. FIP could not alone have supported that level of work. We initially identified six themes and as you go through the Basel statements you'll recognize this, the, these six plus one additional theme. Uh, then we structured all of the work of developing the statements and subsequently our subsequent work has focused on these things as well. And we followed the process of the medication use, the medication use process in hospitals, from procuring medicines, prescribing, preparing and distributing, administering uh, medicines, then monitoring outcomes. And we added an additional to focus on human resources and training to ensure that hospital pharmacy had statements uh, available to guide our development of, uh, of human resources. We spent a significant amount of time and money in recruiting facilitators. These were faculty members from around the world. We had representation from every region of the World Health Organization, 
in our group of uh, facilitators, and we, we employed them on a contract basis to do a systematic literature review of each of these areas. They then served, after writing the literature review, they served as, a, as our facilitators and our conveners around these six areas and worked with, with fairly, fairly large working groups, 40 to 50 people uh, in each section, in each theme, uh, worked to develop initial draft statements. Once the statements were, uh, were initially crafted, we used the internet, and I understand the Delphi technique is a process you're going to use. I think that's a great idea, and it would work very well for us in 2007 into 2008, circulating the statement, draft statements, circulating concepts and ideas, and using the internet to, to have some initial conversation to start the development process initially, before we arrived in, in Basel in 2008 for the global conference. The facilitators led those efforts, and I can't tell you how important their, their efforts were to making the Basel Statements uh, happen. They were also responsible for leading the groups when we were live in Basel at the Global Conference, and they wrote our final reports as well. So there was quite a bit of work that each of them did, and we had to pay each of them a, an honorarium to, to do that amount of work. It was a good year and a half to two year long effort that each of them took on. So we, we wanted to be sure that we had a very systematic approach in the, in the development of the, of the statements. We then spent time, we had a steering committee that I chaired that worked on developing how would we create the statements. And we decided that we would rely on a structure, relying on our member organizations, the FIP member organization. Remember, FIP is, is an association of associations. Each of our official, each of our member organizations were asked to appoint an official representative. And we decided to use a voting technique where individual countries would have each one vote. And that was the consensus approach that we uh, decided on. And we, we felt that that would be an appropriate way of, of making sure that the statements that we uh, developed had consensus, had approval of, of, of the, the global participants in the, in the conference. We invited, though, anyone to participate. And I can tell you that if we had limited our participation to just those individual representatives, I don't believe the global, that the Basel Statements would be as robust and as, as useful as they are. We, enjoy, we had over 300 participants in Basel at the conference, and their input on the, to this process was really, was really invaluable. So we had, at the global conference in Basel, we had 82 countries represented. And the voting process went through, uh, initially, some development work, we had some lectures, we broke into working groups after the, the, uh, the virtual conversations. And after a day and a half um, of, of conversation, we went through a process of, of developing those initial statements. The Hospital Pharmacy Section EXCO, the faculty members, and a variety of others from the steering committee for the Global Conference sat down that evening after the first day of deliberations and wordsmithed the statements. And we spent about four hours, up until about 2.30 in the morning, working on what we felt would be the best language for each of this. At that point, there were 72 statements that were brought to the, the next day's session. The next day, as we introduced them, uh, we had included a seventh theme. We found that many of the statements that the individual groups were creating were really overarching. They could apply to many different areas. And things that we felt that really had to be said about, global, about uh, hospital pharmacy practice in the future, we added that seventh theme that evening. We brought them back the next morning for voting, and the voting process was, was a virtual one, but it was live. We used an electronic system to have individual official representatives vote on each of them. So each of the, um, each of the official representatives were, received a, an electronic voting pad, and we actually read each statement, presented them, and then uh, and then had our representatives actually vote. We had some minor post-conference revision, but by and large, the, the, the uh, statements stand as they are today. When we voted, we used this approach, and I'm not sure if this is the same approach that you'll use in, in the European Association, but uh, this worked for us. We decided to use a four-step uh, process or a four-level uh, four uh, response key. So when we read a statement, we asked the representatives to vote. Do you strongly agree with the statement? Do you agree with the statement, disagree, or strongly disagree? And each of those statements were read, and the voting happened. We tallied in real time, we tallied the results, and then showed the, the conference, the uh, participants, where we stood with that, uh, with that particular statement. So a total of 82 countries cast uh, a vote on at least one statement. Some, some participants 
And I think this is largely a function of the, the, the conduct of the, state, of the conference in English. I think a lot of, uh, rep of official representatives were struggling with translating in their minds, uh, and they, they had them on paper as well, but translating into their language to understand enough sufficiently to vote. But we had, didn't have long to do the voting process. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why not every representative voted on every statement. And if I had a chance to do it again, one of the things I would do would be to lengthen the amount of time we give people to do that, that mental translation at least before they're voting. On an average though, 64 votes were cast per statement. So on each vote, each one on average, about 20 uh, representatives, 18 representatives simply did not vote. But we approved uh, consensus with the proportion of, of representatives saying they strongly agree or agree. And across all statements, the votes cast, 97.5% of all votes cast were strongly agree or agree. And in very few cases, only in 111, someone disagreed, a representative disagreed, and only 22 votes were cast across all the statements and all the representatives voted as they strongly disagreed. We felt that this represented very strong consensus, but as I mentioned before, we had we had to go back and reformat a few of the statements that we found later just weren't quite what we had hoped they would be on um, retrospect, considering we had basically 36 hours to create these statements and from going from almost nothing to this set of statements that we had, we thought it was worthy of going back and asking for a few uh, can, uh, clarifications. We did that. Uh, we did voting virtually using SurveyMonkey and that worked equally well as the voting process we used in, in person. Uh, and that led us to uh, our 75 uh, global, con global statements on the future of hospital pharmacy, or as we call them, the Basel statements. 16 are overarching, nine in procurement, seven in prescribing, nine in prep and delivery, 16 in administration, eight in monitoring, and 10 in human resources. They were published in a supplement to the American Journal of Health System Pharmacy that following March, so just five months later, we had published uh, the proceedings, which include a great deal of information. This information is still available on the AJHP website at that, through that website, through our FAP, FIP website, you can reach the supplement and they're all, uh, all the papers, all the literature evaluation is uh, in there uh, as well. This is, a list of, this is a group of our Australian representatives and I see back, I did, great. Let me just say one other thing before I turn over. In fact, we are in the process in the hospital section of revising the Basel statements. So over the course of the next year, we will be running ourselves at the international level a process of, of looking for changes and revisions to the Basel Statements with the intent of publishing or approving and publishing a new set of Basel Statements, or revised Basel Statements, in Bangkok. So it's going to be the Basel to Bangkok effort. We're going to have a one-day session at our Congress in Bangkok where we will spend, time. we won't have as formal a process as what we did in, in Basel, but we believe that many of the statements have multiple themes, multiple ideas embedded in one statement. We'd like to separate them. We've identified some language that just doesn't work, isn't clear, isn't translatable into other languages or into other practices that we'd like to change. We don't expect a huge number of, of changes. We don't expect this to be a major shift, uh, but there will be some, some, uh, some changes coming over the course of the next year. And I think it will be important if we could work together with EAHB and the FIP hospital section to uh, work, uh, make sure that the changes that we have coming can be incorporated into the work, uh, the important work that you're doing in Europe. 